Hi, I'm Jim W6LG, your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube. Welcome to my radio room here in Rockland, California. One of the things that often comes up is um, feed line losses, length of feed line. Question is often asked, is there a magical length of feed line that I should use? And um, what kind of coax should I use? And oftentimes the answer to that question is RG8X or RG58 or some other small coax that's inexpensive. And the thing that I see happening is oftentimes a guy will spend a lot of money on the microphone and no money on the feed line, which frankly doesn't make a lot of sense. So let's play this game. Yeah! What's my line? Starring RG213, 400 Max, RG8X, RG58, 1 and 7 8 inch Heliax, and more. What's my line? Of course, it should be what's my feed line, and let's cover a couple of topics really quick, and that is, um, is there a magic length to the feed line? There may be a point where the SWR looks better than somewhere else, and if that's the case, it means the feed line has a relatively high SWR at the feed point, and you're finding a spot in that SWR curve, if you will, where it looks better than it really is. And that's not a good solution. We're going to look at um, KB5R's copyrighted calculators. There, there are two on his website that if you haven't spent time with them, do because you can learn a lot just sitting there plugging in numbers and kind of postulating what happens if I use this feed line or that feed line. Um, let's cover a couple of really quick topics. And um, one of them is, what happens when you have a high SWR and the feed line is really lossy? Well, the SWR is going to look better at the transceiver than at the antenna because of feed line losses. So if you're losing half your um, reflected power yeah, because of feed line losses, it looks good at the transceiver, but at the antenna, it's really bad. Um, how do you know it's bad at the antenna? Well, sometimes you have to measure it close to the antenna, or perhaps if you want to look at that feed line as if you're at the antenna, but you're not, you can do some things to um, get to a half wavelength with the velocity factor, but still you've got some feed line losses that occur, and it's going to show a lower SWR than actually is occurring. Um, there are some other devices you can use to measure SWR, and some of them are pretty nifty, but we'll save that for another, another video. Then let's talk about what happens if you send a pulse from your transceiver down the feed line to the antenna, and let's say that you have lossless feed line. It's either ladder line or really large diameter coax, as some of my friends use. You send that pulse down, even with a high SWR, what gets reflected goes down the feed line back to the transceiver, turns around and goes back to the antenna. It does this back and forth until um, there is no power. It does it immediately. You can't measure that. Remember, it's traveling roughly at the speed of light. Um, roughly, there's a velocity factor. But let's, let's say you send that pulse down, you've got lossless feed line. What happens to it? It gets radiated, so you don't lose a bunch of power in the feed line. Let's say you've got a feed line with 3 dB loss, which is half power. You send that pulse down, it loses 3 dB, comes back, loses 3 dB, loses 3 dB, loses 3 dB, loses 3 dB, until there's nothing left to lose. So with feed line that has a lot of loss, you're going to lose... Um, in the face of high SWR at the feed line, you're going to lose a lot of power in the coax. And let's look at that now. Is there a point of diminishing returns in the coax? There is. 
Um, if you can find a really large diameter at a swap meet and you can handle it physically inside your property and get it going to the antenna, it's well worth the money. And that's what that's what I have done a few times. Let's go to this calculator. And again, um, we're talking about two calculators and the final of the two, the second of the two, is going to measure um, the, the effective radiated power, ERP. Why is that important? Uh, it still leaves off some other things like takeoff angle, height of the antenna, surrounding terrain, what may be, may be around the antenna. But just as a raw number, we want to get the highest effective radiated power that we can. So here's KV5R's uh, website, and I'm on his ham radio page. I'm going to go to the coax loss calculator. And um, this page is copyrighted by KV5R uh, in 2015. And it runs a loss, loss calculator by Dan McGuire AC6LI. Now, I am familiar with RG174, 58, 6, 8X, 8, 9913. I've used them all. Um, in fact, I've used pretty much every coax that's on here. And here are the two calculators that I talked about earlier. And uh, let's take a look at a typical installation. And we're going to use RG8X to start. We're going to go to, um, uh, I know for some, uh, HF goes to, uh, to 6 meters, but I'm going to go to what I consider the top of HF for the most part, and that's 10 meters. And let's say that you've got 100 feet of RG8X, and we're on 28 megahertz, but your SWR is a tad high. Uh, it's 3 to 1. And I'm doing that on purpose. Uh, and we'll, we'll try a different one in a minute. And you're running 100 watts output. Uh, that's power into the coax. And we're going to have loss due to um, uh, the SWR and just the feed line losses. And those two will sum up for the total loss. Uh, that'll give us, we need to think in terms of dB. It's not complicated. Uh, we're going to look at power output and power loss. So let's calculate this. And uh, let's say that the uh, feed line losses are 1.6 um, and 0.7 for a total of 2.3 dB loss, which is not quite half, it's 41%. So you'd be delivering 59 watts to the um, to the antenna. Now let's look at. Um, we're going to stick with 100 feet here, and let's say your antenna has a zero dB gain. It's just a dipole, so you're going to be putting that. 59 watts in total into the antenna. Now, let's say that instead of RG8X, you've got, um, and again, keep in mind this 59 watts, 41%. Let's say you've got the extreme, uh, and, and this is what I'm using, RG, or rather, a Helix, a 7 8 inch, which is the way we all describe it. You, usually we don't use the LD50, we say 7 8 inch Heliax, 28 megahertz, 3 to 1 SWR. Now keep in mind, we're ta we talked about feed line. If the feed line has a little loss, here's what happens. So the max loss is pretty much a zero. So is the SWR loss. So we're putting um, 93 watts out of that 100 watts into the antenna for a power loss of about 7%. And then down here, again, if we have a dipole, we're going to be putting 93 watts uh, into the antenna. Now, let's say that you have a tri-band beam, and the antenna gain is uh, 6 dB, which is probably about the max. Now your ERP is 371 watts with 7 8 inch hard line. Let's go back to RG8X. And we'll calculate again. We had that 41%. And calculate here. Now the, the uh, output, output, uh, the effective radiated power rather has dropped to 235 watts. 
Now, you might say, well, that's that's not a huge difference. It's not, but it is. So I don't want to lose any uh, any DB in the coax or the antenna system that I can. So does feed line? So does feed line matter? Well, it does here. Now let's say your neighbor has got uh, the best of everything. So instead, uh, well, let's do this first. Let's say we still got the RG8X, but the SWR is one to one. Or let's say one, it'd be more reasonable. Let's say 1.2 to one. That's about as good as it gets. 100 watts, calculated loss now is 31%. So 69 watts to the antenna. If you have a tri-bander, you're putting out 275 watts of ERP. Now, let's say that instead of that, you're back to the uh, Heliax 7 8 inch that I'm really familiar with and calculate it. So we've got 275. Uh, we're going to go here, calculate. So 4% loss. Calculate instead of the 275. Now I've got 381 watts. So feline does uh, does matter. So does SWR. Now let's go to the extreme, and we're going to go back to RG8X. Um, okay, there's RG8X, and let's say you've got a six to one SWR, which is crazy high, and maybe you're running it through an antenna tuner, and we won't even go there with with losses. And we've got RG8X, 20 megahertz, 6 to 1 SWR, 100 watts, calculate, losing roughly 55%, or about half power, about 3 dB, so 3.4 dB. Now, let's go down here and see what the ERP is again. RG8X, a tri-bander with 6 dB gain, uh, 179 watts, with an SWR of 6 to 1. Now, again, let's go back to the extreme because we're going to look at this again. Again, pretty much lossless coax. So the feed line losses and the SWR losses will be pretty much nil. So we've got 12%. Come down here, 6 dB gain. Now, with the RG8X, we had 100, 180 watts in round numbers, 179.6. Calculate. It's double, 320 roughly 351 watts. So what I'm trying to show is that, um, and, and we'll, maybe we take one more look at this with the RG213, but I was going from one really small coax RG8X to one really large coax and showing that feed line losses become really important. And in the face of high SWR, if you've got something that's the equivalent of almost like a ladder line, uh, like an inch and seven eighths, even in the face of really high SWR, your losses become relatively small. Now, RG213 uh, may be a good compromise or LMR400, which is usually what I, uh, I recommend. Let's take a quick look at that. We're gonna compare that to the seven eighths inch hard line. Okay, so back here, and we've still got up on the screen the uh, 7 8 inch hard line and 100 feet at high SWR. Now let's go to RG213. And again, we've got about 351 watts, 12% efficiency. So let's do um, LMR 400, which I, I like a lot, or 400 max I found was even a little bit better in the stuff that I tested. So 6 to 1 SWR, uh, LMR 400 or 400 max, calculate. Now the power loss becomes 32%. We're down here at 351 watts. Let's see what that looks like. 270. So it becomes how much can you afford kind of question. And um, some friends of mine who have really gone to the extreme with the uh, inch and seven eighths swear by it. I, I know they've got really strong signals. ZS1 SBW has a special coax out of Europe and his signal is always strong because he has no feed line losses. It's virtually zero. And he spends a lot of time uh, maintaining his antenna and he gets out unbelievably well. Um, 
for me, the point of diminishing returns is uh, 400 max or LMR 400. Put your money into the fee line about special lengths. Um, if you're doing a mobile installation, sometimes adding a couple of feet to the coax makes the SWR look better. But all you're doing is really fooling yourself into thinking that you've improved the situation when really you haven't. If you want to know if you can measure it accurately, and you can't get near the antenna, and you have a really low low line feet, low line loss feed line, a multiple of a half wavelength. So if we think of a, a wavelength being a sine wave, halfway through that cycle, it's back to baseline zero. So at that point, it looks the same as if it's at the end. So the half wavelength times the velocity factor. We didn't talk about velocity factor, but it varies from 65% to 97% depending on the coax. And you need to know what it is. And if you don't know what it is for the coax that you have, measure it with one of the devices. Um, like an antenna analyzer, there are ways to do that. So if you want to know what the SWR is, the feed line, and you've got a really low loss coax, you can get a half wavelength of that coax length, figure the velocity factor, so you're going to have to change its length and shorten it even more. And you can measure it at that point. I'll show you what's going on. Um, so you can see the importance of feed line losses. And we'll talk some more about that in the next video. But again, put your money not where your mouth is. Put it where the coax is and where the antenna is. And if you have a choice between a really good antenna and a really good feed line, clearly the feed line is more important. It, it's really where you can have just huge losses and not delivering power to the antenna. I hope you've enjoyed that. If you have, please do subscribe. Get your friends to subscribe. And we're doing um, some more videos about antennas and other things. And in fact, uh, what I'd like to do is um, construct an antenna tuner, and I've got the parts to do that. So some fun stuff ahead. I'm Jim, W6LG. Your ham radio Elmer here on YouTube saying 73. And by the way, it's always 73. It's never 73s, plural, best 73s, very best 73s, none of that. It was just the number of the message, 73. Thank you.